one thing that, that always has to be on our mind as we're developing websites these days is the fact that there's a possibility that people are going to be accessing our websites from a mobile device. All right? Um, and again, that there's there's different, how do I want to say this? There's there's that there's there's characteristics that are very distinct about uh, accessing a site on a mobile device versus a desktop. Typically the connection is slower. Typically the processor is less powerful. Typically um, the screen is smaller, physically smaller. Um, there's a lot of things that are different in that regard that you kind of have to take into account when you're doing that. In addition to the physical differences between the two environments, there's sort of the mindset of the user. Uh, people don't necessarily access mobile sites for the same reason they access a desktop site. So, for example, LC's page, um, you might access the desktop site like to schedule your semester, you know, schedule for spring semester, or to check your major, what, what the electives that you need are to, to graduate, or any number of those sorts of things. <laughs> it's unlikely that you would do that on a mobile site. On a mobile site, you probably would be more likely looking up some very basic information. Maybe you're running late and you need the professor's phone number. Or maybe you want to see if class has been canceled because of snow. Or something like that. You know, that would be maybe a couple typical things that you'd do. So, in addition to the physical lim limitations, people typically are going to be doing different things on a mobile site than on a desktop site. Not always, but in many cases there will be. So the question then is, is how to make your site work with mobile. Now there's any number of different techniques that you can mix and match to do that. All right. Um, for example, one thing you can do is you can have server-side code look to see who's accessing the site. Then based on who's accessing the site, by who, I mean a mobile device versus a, a desktop or a laptop, you can redirect them to a totally different page. All right. That's one thing that you can do. Another thing you can do, fall into the category of what's called responsive web design and progressive enhancement and that sort of thing. So what I'd like to do before we get into the class proper is show you a brief example of what we're working on, all right, of how we could, um, what we could do to, to um, uh, you know, Make, make a better mobile experience for um, the people accessing our site via the mobile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the site that we started last week. this up in the web browser. That's what it looked like when we left it off. And again, that's kind of the design we're going to stick with. You could certainly make it prettier. Um, I was just some padding here to space it out a little bit. But that's the design we had last time. And that looks reasonable in a desktop environment. Again, we can make it look spiffier, but that is a reasonable design. Let's view that page in a mobile device. Well, how can we do that? Well, if this was on a web server that was actually connected to the internet, I could just go and type in on my phone or, or on my tablet or whatever and see it. Um, 
But when you're developing, oftentimes you don't have that luxury or maybe there's a production server that you're going to put it on, but you don't really have a testing development server or whatever. Um, there actually is a, a Opera mobile emulator, which emulates a number of different devices. So let's emulate this guy here. Is it free to download? That's free to download, yes. Let's pretend we're an HTC hero. And I can go in here and I can paste the address, which is on my development machine. And it'll show me what it's going to look like on, uh, in that environment. It doesn't really look so good, right? I mean, uh, typically, two-column layouts aren't good on, on mobile devices. Typically, two-column layouts don't really work very well on mobile devices. All right? So, how do we fix this? Well, as I mentioned, one thing that we could do is we could, through our server-side code, redirect them to a different page that it was built and, and optimized for the mobile environment. That's not what we're going to talk about. That's actually pretty easy to do. We'd, we'd have to look to see uh, the code to redirect someone, which is pretty straightforward. There's just one little instruction that we can put in our code, and we'll look at redirecting later on. Yes? Couldn't we put a button in there so they could choose which one they want to go on to? Have on there yeah, we, we could do we could do a lot of things. All right. Uh, what I want to talk about now, though, is just having the site being smart enough to know what style sheet to apply without the user having to uh, make a selection. Keep in mind that when you give users option that options that that clutters the water. All right, that that muddies the water, and it may make things more difficult to do, and so on. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to go and look at the code and we're going to apply what's called a media query to our CSS. Oh shoot. I had it. Let's go. There we go. A media query. Media queries have been around in CSS for a long time. Um, one of the mo more popular uses of a media query is to uh, distinguish between um, if you're displaying it on the screen and if you're going to print it out. So you could create a, you could create a different style if you were viewing a page versus if you want to print it out, which is useful, right? Because you might not want to see navigation on a printout. I mean, it's useless, you know. Uh, you might uh, not want to see some of the images if you're printing out. You know, like think of if you're going to Google Maps and you're getting direction, directions. You might just want just a straightforward list of the text directions. So there, there's all kinds of reasons for doing that. But these can be adapted to allow only, um, uh, or th these can be adapted to give us some uh, degree of flexibility in choosing how a user is going to see our page based on um, the device they're browsing it. And in this one, the media query says has to be a screen, and by screen it means a computer screen, computer or laptop screen, and the maximum device width um, has to be 600 or greater. So what's going to happen here is when I go and view this page, now, actually, that should be minimal. That's what we get, all right? And that looks a little better, all right? It doesn't have the two columns. It only has the one column. Why does this work? This works because um, that media query prevented that CSS from applying. Now, 
there's a few other code we have. Notice that that text is pretty small. There's actually uh, a snippet of code that we can put in to prevent that. Um, you'll also notice that that broke our desktop browsing. That's only because we're using IE8 or less. So I'm going to put in a fix to, to fix those two circumstances. So we'll be back in business. So if you were using Mozilla, that wouldn't have affected it? Right. And we can, we can take a look at that in a second. So let me bring it up in Mozilla first. not affected in Mozilla. And IE is affected because, well, IE is different than everyone else. So we have to put this little catch in, in the master page. And what this effectively says is, hey, if it's IE and it's IE less than 8 and I'm not on a mobile device, go and apply the style sheet regardless because IE, previous versions of ID do not support um, media queries. Isn't that a comment? It is... It has a syntax of a comment, but IE will interpret it as an if statement. It's a quirk in how if, uh, IE works. It's like an extension in IE that will allow that. So now if we go and view this in IE, we will get the style sheet, even though the media query failed us. All right. Now the one thing that we can do for the mobile, let me go and... Let me go put code in to make the mobile a little bigger. If we had time, we would change this to be a J, use jQuery mobile to um, give it a real mobile, mobile sort of look. But this little meta line here that I'm going to paste in. should help the appearance on mobile devices. All right, there we go. Helped it too much, now it's a little big. All right. Now, one thing that we can often do in this case is Right now, the mobile is getting no style at all. We could actually put, and what we'll often do is we'll put two style sheets in. One with no media query, and then one with a media query. The one with no media query gets applied to everyone. All right? And that might be some very basic things like, you know, background colors, um, fonts, uh, fonts, faces, and, and so on. 
and then we write a style sheet with a, with a uh, media query to get applied if certain conditions are true. Like, for example, we're on a computer and the, the minimum width is, is more than a certain amount. So that way, you get basic people accessing the mobile site will get the mobile version. People accessing with a, with a bigger monitor on a computer will get a more enhanced version. And we can do a lot of things with CSS. We can show and hide things. We can do so. We can really, with one page, uh, we can we can uh, tweak the page to to be responsive to the environment, to be responsive to whether it's viewed uh, on that. There, thought that might be fun to look at to see how to do that. Uh, if you are interested, uh, th there's a new mobile web development course that will be uh, will will is offered this term which is too late for this term, but it's offered next term as well, that, that talks about uh, these different techniques and goes over them in more detail. Um, I guess the reason I bring it up is, is you know, um, just as mobile um, devices are becoming more and more popular, um, the thought of how our websites are going to be affected by that becomes a bigger and bigger thought and starts to seep into the curriculum. You know, probably, let me think, a year and a half back, maybe two years back, a year and a half back, I don't remember exactly when, I don't think I gave more than just a two-minute mention about mobile site development in, in any of my classes, all right? I may have mentioned something like, gee, you know, keep your CSS and HTML separate, and that'll help you if you do mobile development. You know, that might have been the extent of the coverage that I went. A few years back, I went over a couple of quick examples. And now it's becoming, again, relevant really in all my courses. Um, most all of my courses were at least mentioning um, the use of, of um, um, getting your sites in line for, for mobile. Any questions? I yeah. had a question from last time, actually. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Um, when we did the menu item at Treeview, mm -hmm. And I mean, I was I was also looking at the style sheet that we did because mm -hmm. when I was doing mine, I wanted my menu to go across. Mm -hmm. And then I saw in the book, if you're applying CSS to an ASP element or mm -hmm. whatever, you have to make it into a class first, I guess. Is that right? Like a CSS class. There's a lot of ways that you can do it. Um, remember that. What you really need to know is you need to, to apply CSS to something that comes from an ASP.NET uh, element. You really need to know how it gets rendered as HTML. All right? So, for example, let's, let's go and look at this. So let's go and run this. All right, here we go. And we have these links and so on and so forth. All right, let's look at the HTML that gets generated. First of all, we notice that the HTML is in a nav div, right? That can be useful. We notice that on the UL tags, there's a class indicating the level of the menu it is. So for example, the home, there's a class of level one. If we look down to some of the other things, there'll be a different level um, associated with that. This is from last. Yeah. Oh, this is in the... This is the HTML. Oh, okay, because I'm looking at mine going, there's no UL on mine. Okay. Of course not. Never there's right. ASP.NET controls, you okay, know. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, so the point is, is that if we know the hooks, we can then go and we can style things any number of different ways. So, for example, I could say... Any links in the nav section 
have a color of red. And a font size of 1.5 M. Okay, I think you answered it. I sort of forgot about that. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> you ask the question, you're getting the answer. That's right. All right. So now we got it red and we got it bigger. All right. So the, to your question, do you have to assign a class to it, or do you have to? The answer is no. You don't have to. I forgot about that. Yeah. You just need a hook to the HTML. Now, one way to do that is to look at the classes. For example, if I look at this, I'll notice, for example, these level threes are a class that get assigned to these lower level things. All right, there's, I think, a level one, level two, level three, maybe even a level four. So I could do something like this in the style sheet for those. I could say everything of a level three make the color blue and make the size, font size, yeah. You know, 0.8M. So now if we run this, we will see I did something wrong. At any rate, let's do this. At any rate, the bigger point is what you really need to know is you need a hook to get to it, and you should be able to get to it through the class. Um, the other thing you can do is there's a myriad of ways that you could apply styles, or I won't say styles because that might make you think of CSS, to ASP.NET elements. For example, if we look at this, we can go and... doing wrong. I think I do anyhow. I was looking at the wrong HTML. I was looking at the HTML for the menu, not the tree view.
both these guys in there. have that class so that didn't really help but it did allow me to assign a class let's go in and let's put in a class for level and then let's expand the tree view or the menu view there we go so those get the different color because they're the different class. I forgot we had the two things on there. All right. So anyhow, the bottom line is you have a hook into the HTML. Um, so you can do it. Yeah. Is there much chance that, um, I don't know, let's say you go to a different version of ASP.NET that those hooks would change and be something different? So then your style sheet would you have to update your style sheet to... Is there a chance? Yeah, there's a chance. So you would need to test it if you had a new new version. Um, keep in mind some of those things you control. Like for example, you could go and you could, on this tree view, you can give on almost any HTML or any ASP.NET element, there is a CSS class that you could apply. So you could apply a class to that tree view. Oh, uh, you could name the class. Yeah, so you could give the class a name. So that would sort of be under your control. Oh. All right. Now some of the things that it generates automatically, like the fact that it generated level 1, level 2, that got generated by the ASP.NET code, in which case, yeah, next version it could say, you know, um, Level underscore, level underscore one. Yeah, exactly. Something goofy like that. In which case, you'd have to you'd have to check. The other thing you can do is you can put attributes in here for the default style to all nodes. You can know, then go and give a back color and this and this and this. The problem with doing it that way is um, that limits your reusability because you're 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 effectively putting an inline style on. All right, so then you, you don't really have the reusability of it. You're, in my mind, you're better off your first thought of going to CSS. Now, there are some things, and we'll probably talk about them at some point, that you simply can't style with CSS. You, you, got, you have no hook into uh, the HTML code that gets generated, in which case you can use, um, you can use the themes in ASP.NET. Probably talk about that at some point in the future. It is covered in the book. Um, I forget where. Uh, chapter four or five, somewhere in that neighborhood. So if you look up uh, ASP.NET themes, you can you can get some information on that. If we don't get around to chatting about it. All right. So. What is XML? And not what the initials stand for. Because <laughs> you're right, XML is extensible markup language. I don't know why it's not EML. Maybe there's something else that's EML. Maybe X is a cooler letter than. Yeah, maybe there was a tie into the ESPN's X Games or something. I don't know. You know. It's hard to say. But what does that really mean? 